Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today we've got good news and we've got bad news, but I will leave you with things to be excited for and I will end it on something hilarious. So let's just get right into it. Enough chin wagging, let's get started. So let's start this off with some slightly skewed but also partially exciting news so you may have heard around Meta's horizon. The metaverse has had a substantial amount of growth and is continuing to do so. But a spokesman had come out and said that the universe has had a user base of over 300,000 monthly users. So these numbers, they are really impressive, but I feel there's something kind of disingenuous about it. I feel something's off about it because We've had a lot of events recently in venues which would have attracted a lot of people, but they're not users that will constantly keep coming back. So I'd like to know the venues versus the Worlds numbers, although soon this is going to be one ecosystem. So Worlds is still in beta as well. It's only been released around a couple months in a couple of regions, but Rec Room and VR Chat still seem to be the reigning champions when it comes to custom worlds to hang out in. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Anyway, while we're on the topic of VR Chat, the app has got an update that will change Change the face of social interactions, face tracking of your avatars, and interesting accessibility opportunities with the use of OSC, which stands for Open Sound Control. So this started life as a way to connect devices to the platform for performances, but it's now been opened up with much greater flexibility, so you can use your own tracking devices to allow for deeper facial expressions. So VRChat tweeted out saying you can put a heart rate monitor on your avatar, introduce custom eye and face tracking. Even go the extra mile if you're a VTuber to introduce avatar events or animations when you get donations when live streaming. So this interface is going to allow so much flexibility, just you're limited by your imagination with this. And I see Vive's face tracking device now. Sales are going to go through the roof. To implement this though, you will need some technical development knowledge around VRC. And I am curious to see if we'll be able to just buy avatars that have this sort of thing configured already because people have different facial expressions but i'm pretty sure something will happen i'm very happy to see the community metaverse one that we've created not the one that we're being told to use is being stepped up a notch and since i'm already being negative in this space around meta in the first half of this video i'm going to bring some more sad news and it's around the version 38 update that was expected to roll out last week it has had some delays so expect it to come out very very soon i can't say when but it's extremely soon and it seems the issue of version 37 which i'm still experiencing like the aberrations the loss of the mapping for my guardian have slowed down the roadmap for these feature releases so expect some pushbacks on additional features such as the horizon rooms which many of us want so bad but stay tuned as soon as i know something i will let you guys know so this one is around the metaverse we were just talking about for us to be able to be connected to the metaverse where Wherever we are in the world, if we're out on the go, we just need an internet connection. And if you've played virtual reality, you know that we need a connection that is extremely reliable and has low latency. So Motorola, hello Moto, and Lenovo have just met up to create a 5G device that's being advertised as a neckband, which really just looks like a device that's got a lanyard around it, that is designed specifically for the AR and VR space using Verizon 5G ultra wideband connectivity. It contains a Snapdragon 8, a touchpad, a SIM card for big data plans, speakers, a gyroscope, accelerometer, a barometer, GPS, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And this has piqued my interest, but I failed to see why you would create an external device that someone's going to pay for when you have a 5G capable device right in our pockets that has so much power. I would happily have an application that goes into like VR AR mode and the connectivity and the processing of the of the data being sent takes priority over anything that's on the phone. Because I'm in the VR space anyway, I'm not going to be using my phone that much. So if you saw my last video, I was giving Basti564 a big old thank you for his work in the VR space. And this time Basti and 3than, if I'm saying that wrong, I do apologize, have enabled us to implement one of the most requested features on Quest, which is playing music through Spotify and talking to our friends through Discord from within the headset whilst playing games. So there was this rudimentary application available a while back called Null for Music, where you'd put your own MP3 files onto the headset, but it kind of just disappeared. I'm not sure where it went. I can't find it at least. So it seems these features are actually possible using something called the Oculus process. I do have a video on using this and you can also follow the GitHub documentation. I'll link it down below in the description where you remove the limitation set by Facebook on the headset, which then allows you to sideload the Spotify and the Discord APK 
and play music and speak to your friends in the background. So I will link that down below in the description as well. But warning, if you do try this, there is a possibility you may have to factory reset your headset and you may lose some of your game progress. So back up anything before doing so. One more sad story before I move on to games and updates to be excited for. So as we saw a leak in the Oculus developer documentation a couple of weeks back, I showed there was a body tracking section, which we thought is going to be used for fitness apps that seem to be showcasing leg raises more often now. So we do expect some body tracking to occur, but a new report has come out from Meta saying that full body tracking is likely not possible with inside out tracked headsets. After we've had a little fish shake and debate over Oculus avatars not having legs in the metaverse, but that's beside the point. But Meta have said that full body tracking is not going to be possible with future headsets. It's not going to be viable with inside out tracking because as headsets get smaller, the cameras get closer to the body and you see less of the lower half. Which is kind of sad, but this highlights quite a few things. So Meta will need, they will need to provide additional hardware for full body tracking. They're gonna either support existing solutions, they're gonna have to create a lighthousing solution or lighthouse support, which they have hinted at, or just not implement full body tracking at all, which is not going to happen. If they want a metaverse, they're going to need this for the social demand that we have, because we already have this on the PC VR. We're not just going to completely ignore it on the standalone. It's just not going to happen. So I am very excited to see what's going to happen in this space, because the next generation, we should be having this kind of facial tracking, the codec avatars, full body tracking. It's the next steps, the next iteration, and we're already seeing things in the works for that. So what are they going to do? Hmm. Hmm. Let's talk about games now, something nice. So this one's Pistol Whip Encore. This is coming out next week, expected on the 24th of February, and there's not much information on it except a silhouette of two characters that we've seen in this game before. And it's called Encore, so is it going to be a mix of their content? Is there going to be a multiverse time traveling thing going on? But for sure, based on Pistol's track record, pun intended, we can expect some new tracks to enjoy and small nuances to change the style of play with modifiers. Or could it be a multiplayer mode because of a recent post, there's like a toggle button here that says party mode on. So now I'm interested. Not long to wait. Now a new game. I did show this during its alpha or was it beta? I can't remember. It was a long time ago and so I can't really remember, but it was early. That's the point. The point was that it's early and this game is called Outlier and it's just got an official release date. This is a first person sci-fi roguelite coming in March. But the interesting part of this game is the weapon design. It's not the standard assault rifle and pistol, although you have that kind of fire rate. It's become very stylized and very cool because they have abilities. This is a sci-fi game. You also have interesting movement mechanics, like there's a dash where you have to pull the world past you, which is very different. It does take some getting used to, so pre-warned, you will have to adjust. There's also things like telekinesis and other abilities as well, which has some amazing mechanics. This is a PC VR game to get excited for coming on March 17th, and it will be coming to the Quest platform at some point this year as well. In a recent video, I did speak about Iron Rebellion, a mechbot game, and someone commented saying, oh, Steve, wait for Vox Machina. But a release date for this game has just dropped for the Quest 2, and it looks quite exciting. So this is releasing on the Quest in March alongside a campaign update. So you're going to have a single player narrative to enjoy, as well as the multiplayer mode. The game will be a Quest 2 exclusive though, so Quest 1 owners, you will not get to enjoy this game due to the performance issues that they had encountered. The game is going to have parity as well across PC VR and Quest versions, so crossplay is going to be available and a cross-platform friend system. I'm so pumped to get in a mech and enjoy a single player story and some great multiplayer action because last time I enjoyed a really good online VR mech game was Rigs on PSVR. And I hope that comes to Quest as well or revamp for PSVR too. So, oh yeah, the date. This is coming out on the 3rd of March, so keep your eyes peeled. And finally, Last, I love this, last week we had Gorilla Arms. This time, the headline reads, rising popularity of VR sparks 31% rise in insurance claims. So according to Aviva, an insurance company, there's a 31% increase in home content claims from people smashing lights, breaking walls, and smashing TVs whilst playing VR. And I find that so funny. They said the average claim is around 650 pound for a broken TV. And at this rate, I'm not gonna be surprised if there's going to be like a VR clause in your home insurance or a VR specific package. I find this madness and also quite amusing, but please, 
Play safe when you're playing virtual reality. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It's been a good mix of good news and bad news, but at least we're leaving on something to look forward to and something quite amusing. So please consider subscribing. Such a small deed means the world to me. Have a great week. Happy gaming, guys. Good day. Thank you.